Hey guys, welcome back to Seattle Other Research. This is Joe. Um, it's been a while since I've made a video, uh, so somehow I've actually gotten busier during quarantine. Um, work has been nuts, house shopping has picked up, and uh, life has just kind of taken over, which I actually think I'm, I'm fairly fortunate to be able to say that. Hope everyone out there is, is um, uh, being safe and staying healthy and productive. And uh, my thoughts are, are with those of you folks who um, might be in a, a tougher spot than, than I am at this point. Um, let's, let's hope we get uh, life back to normal soon. Uh, in the meantime, uh, it seems quite a bit more trivial to talk about this at, at this point with so much going on. But um, it's been a while since I made a video, so I wanted to um, update uh, on just a super quick overview of the wallets that I have been using over the past couple years. So um, a couple of these wallets were purchased before I really kind of dive deep into the world of Leathercraft and before I, you know, understood that there were multiple types of leather and different tanning methods and, you know, sewing methods and whatever production methods uh, uh, that could go into creating a wallet. So, um, you know, I bought a lot of crap. Um, I've bought a lot of things conversely, however, that I absolutely love. And of course I don't need really more than one wallet. So, um, you know, uh, I end up kind of swapping things out every couple months and then I'll probably end up selling, uh, some things just to clear the way for my move. But, but anyway, let's, let's get into these. I'll, I'll, I'll take you through kind of a timeline of, of wallets that I've either purchased or even made in the last couple, uh, two years, I'd say. So... Uh, this one here is first out of the gate. I actually bought this um, on my honeymoon. Um, so it's with my wife in Greece and the Greek islands. And there's one particular island called Crete. Um, fun fact, it's supposedly the birthplace of Zeus. But Crete is known for uh, its leather, uh, supposedly. Now, that could very well just be something that they tell tourists who have money to spend at any of the many shops. Uh, but this is, a, this is a wallet that I used for just about a year. And uh, in terms of what kind of wallet, uh, I mean, it just says genuine leather, which as you should know if you watch this channel, genuine leather, you know, sometimes folks, maybe maybe folks from overseas will use genuine leather in, in that they're saying this is real leather, not necessarily the actual genuine leather, you know, part of the hide, which is the crap part. So it's hard for me to say whether this is, you know, crap leather or super quality, um, but uh, this is what I was using. So it always kind of makes me nervous as we sort of look into this thing when leather products have um, this sort of cloth, nylon sort of covering. Um, you shouldn't really need to do that with leather in my opinion, and I bet if I like ripped this up and tore this out, um, the leather on the back end would look a little bit ratty. Just my guess, I could be wrong. Um, so specifically where I bought this, it was just like a, a small store. You know, there were dozens of stores that all claimed to be kind of handcrafted, fine, um, uh, fine European, Italian source leather. Um, from a crash, craftsmanship perspective, that's a hard word to say, you could see it's, it is starting to come apart a bit here. Um, it's just kind of regular wear and tear. It's it's literally, it's ripped apart here. I didn't even notice how bad this had gotten, but uh, glue is pretty weak. The thread looks super thin. Um, so that's something you kind of want to look out for. I mean, like this is extremely thin thread and it's so perfect. It's, it's double kind of stitched, which is sort of interesting. You know, if you watch a lot of the uh, Saddleback videos and, and some other um, kind of smaller craftsmen talk about this too, but the more holes you put in leather, you know, the weaker you're basically making the leather. So while the double stitch is kind of okay, it's probably would have been a better, better thing had they used higher quality thread and thicker thread and just gone through with uh, one set of holes. So, I mean, this is a lot of, you know, weakness that they're putting into the edge of this. Now the edges here are burnished, so it doesn't seem to be, you know, sometimes folks will put like a gum. Actually, this looks like it's rolled over now that I take a really close look at this. So it's not even a burnished edge. It's like a piece of this super thin leather that's just been rolled over to sort of look like, yeah, and then they've got it stitched here. So, wow. 
yeah, so super, super paper thin leather, um, you know, machine stitching and super thin thread that's coming apart. Um, cloth, you know, insides here that are covering parts of the leather, which, you know, it's probably there to add strength because the leather is so crappy itself. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it does seem to have kind of a nice pull up effect. So maybe it's just decent leather, but an extremely thin cut of it. Um, I don't know. I, I highly doubt that they'd be using something like a Chrome XL that, that Horween makes. So this is probably, you know, if I, if I were to guess, this is probably just a Chrome tan, um, leather that, uh, again, this, this type of leather to me just doesn't age nearly as, as nice. And we'll get into some differences here. So anyway, that's the, that's the Greek wallet. All right, so up next, kind of in the timeline, uh, is a wallet that I definitely will go back to at some point because I love it so much and it's super quality. So I bought this at Filson in Seattle, and this was before I really knew anything about leather. I just kind of wanted a nice wallet. I loved the Filson brand, and I went for it. And then afterwards, you know, when I started getting into leather, uh, I learned that they use Wicked and Craig, and this is a Wicked and Craig bridal leather. Um, I don't know what the actual color is, but when I bought it, this was bright orange and super kind of dry, waxy feeling, uh, if that makes sense. If you've never felt a bridal leather before, actually, I've got a piece of it here I use in my own crafting. So this is, this is basically the same type of leather. Let's see if I can't get it to focus. Hard to really see up close, but bridal leather has a super kind of waxy. It's it's there's not a lot of pull up there. It's a little stiffer, um, but it ages super well, and it's really fun when it kind of breaks in. So uh, this wallet I used for you know about two years off and on, and you can see it's I mean you know it was bright orange, and the surface of it was kind of flawless, and again kind of waxy and dry and stiff. Um, now you can see it's developing kind of some, some nice wrinkles. The leather is just as strong, but it's, it's just getting that patina, um, from, from regular use. So, uh, you've got some wrinkles, which there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make the leather any weaker, just a sign of good leather that's, that's broken in. Um, stitching, I don't know what stitching they used, but it, uh, has held up so far, despite it also being fairly thin thread. Um, and it's just a nice looking wallet. So, I mean, it's, it's thin, thin pockets here. You can see they're, they're still pretty firm, even after, you know, a couple years of use. Um, bridal leather is, is just the king of sort of durable, sort of hard use leather. So if you want something that, you know, where the leather is not going to fall apart, you know, bridal is, is, is where it's at most of the time. Um, and you've kind of got, see, there's no cloth interior here. You see the back of the back of the leather piece itself, and they do fold over here. Actually, uh, no, this isn't a fold over. This is just a very thin piece of leather here to add some strength to that back side where you're going to be like pushing and pulling and smashing it down. Um, so this is a this is a nice touch that they've sewn and glued in here. I think this wallet was was probably you know uh, I, I want to say it was about 120 bucks which not cheap by any means, but um, you know, I'll probably go back to this time and again so I can continue to see it age. And uh, what's really cool, it's, you can't really see it, maybe a little bit here. The burnished edges are still super shiny, which is cool. You can kind of see the different layers of, of the leather. So really nice looking uh, wallet. Uh, let's get into, so these are two I made and have been using. This is uh, another one I purchased. This is the stock and barrel um, vertical wallet that I uh, showed in, I uh, believe, unboxing video, and then I applied some Neat's Foot Oil in a separate video. You can kind of see what that looks like. Um, this used to be a super creamy kind of kind of buff color. Actually, used to be kind of this this color here. I made my own version of the vertical wallet. It's not nearly as as good yet, but um, just to show you, this is what it used to be, and this is what it has turned into. And I really just used this for a few months before I um, swapped it out. Um, but applying that Neat's Foot oil 
and um, just kind of regular use. It's gonna darken it in different places. It just looks super cool. Uh, the one thing that I pointed out in one of my earlier videos on this wallet is that this leather, it, it's very thin. Uh, and so one of the things I noticed is that it came with this crack. I'm, I'm sure this 99% of their wallets don't have this. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's just a minor defect that kind of is random. But, uh, you know, this this was here when it arrived, basically. Not enough for me to want to, you know, blow them up about getting a replacement or anything like that. Just kind of too much trouble. Um, the uh, other thing I'll point out, when I typically make vertical wallets, I love burnishing the insides of these pockets. These uh, might have been sanded, but they definitely are not burnished. They're still fairly rough here, and you can kind of very easily see the, the different layers. Uh, just a small thing. It doesn't make the leather any weaker from my perspective. Um, it might fray a little bit easier if I were to use this for years, but you know, this is this is going to be this is going to be a wallet that holds up as well. It's kind of a veg tan. I believe they also use Wicked and Craig, and so in fact, this might be the same same leather, this kind of American Vaquetta leather. Uh, put that aside. Uh, so overall, um, good wallet. It was uh, a lot cheaper than the these other two here. So I think for the price, you know, you're getting something good. Um, the only other thing I'll say here, the edges here are not burnished, uh, or they they maybe they're burnished technically, but they also apply some kind of gum or paste or something. Um, on the edges here. So you don't have kind of a natural burnish look. It's uh, it's kind of just gummy and, you know, paint or something, almost like uh, plastic or rubber or something. But, uh, you know, overall for the price, I think this is a really good value wallet and they make a ton of great Leathercraft videos that you should absolutely go check out. So super cool brand. Uh, and then we'll get into two that I made that I've also been using. So this is a um, Shell Cordovan wallet. So it's Ricardo Shell Cordovan. It's basically the only shell that I'm able to find um, to purchase. And then the interior is um, Black Dublin from Horween. So it's just a veg tan um, black. And the thread is a uh, 0.6 millimeter uh, Ritza Tiger thread. So Tiger Thread's just the absolute best that you could possibly um, buy and use for Leathercraft. So this was actually one of the first wallets that I made and just loved. And of course, because it's made with shell, you know, I was able to buy the, sh the entire shell for about 250. And that's sometimes what shell Cordovan wallets retail for. Um, and I should be able to make three or four, uh, actually, like five or six more of these wallets exactly like that for basically the cost of one were I to have purchased it myself. Um, one of my earliest wallets, you know, it's got things that I would like to improve about it. You know, it's it's definitely a work in progress. I'm no master craftsman by any means, but um, this was fun to make and I absolutely loved having a Cordovan wallet for a couple months. I'll probably actually um, end up putting this on eBay for now. Uh, and finally, the wallet that I'm using today, another Wicked and Craig. However, this is harness leather. So where, uh, let's see, so where the bridle leather is super kind of matte and dry and sort of waxy, this is again the Filson uh, wallet, the harness leather is shiny and kind of just has a sheen to it that is really, really nice. I absolutely love. Um, so it's it's a little bit more reflective. It's a little bit more moldable. It's, um, you know, you can kind of bend it and it will keep shape. And uh, it'll be tough to see here, but you can start to see where my cards from use have sort of pushed out the sides of the um, wallet in a really cool way. And if, you know, once I take out the cards, um, that mold is going to stay there. So that's cool. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of this wallet. I actually, um, on this one in particular, I installed a thin piece of the same leather kind of on the top here, again, to add that strength. Single pocket for cash. No hidden pockets on this one, but um, uh, it holds definitely everything I need it to. 
And uh, then of course my favorite part of any leather craft project is getting these edges burnished. So uh, this is again Wicked and Craig harness leather with uh, white Ritza tiger thread. So again going with just a different color of the tiger thread and it's actually a little bit thicker too. Um, so you can kind of, um, you've got more strength for each hole that you're putting in. Um, and that's harness leather. So this is a wallet that, again, you know, harness leather. And the reason I went with this color, this is the russet color from Wicked and Craig. It will age super, super well and will just darken. Um, so I kind of, I, I've switched over to this one, A, because I, I love the feel and sort of the look of the harness leather, their, their glazed harness. And B, because, you know, this shell cordovan, while it feels amazing and it's, you know, a shell cordovan, you can't really top that from a leather quality perspective. It's already super dark, so there's not a lot of way for it to go at this point, right? It'll just continue to kind of get shiny and, and, and weathered, and, and that'll be cool, but um, I kind of want to use a wallet for, for a little while that will um, actually darken. I'll be able to kind of document um, what that looks like. So, so all right, folks, uh, these are the wallets that I've been using. The one thing I didn't include in here was the, uh, the thin fin from, um, Lost Dutchman leather goods. Um, I actually think I, I might've packed that one away. I, I love that one. And they actually also use harness leather. It's a thinner cut. So this is a 3.5 to four ounce, um, for the entire wallet. Um, I believe that that Finnegan from Lost Dutchman is, is, quite a bit thinner than that, but still it's got that beautiful, here's another example of, of glazed leather. It's got um, some great pull up and it's just bendy and moldable. So um, they use harness leather as well, which I love. It's one of the reasons why I wanted their um, kind of flap wallet. I had a, another video about it, so feel free to go check that out if you're interested to see what it looks like, but it's packed away, so I can't talk about it here. Um, but that's a lot of wallets. So you'll probably, you know, if you watch the eBay, you'll probably see a handful of these um, up in the next couple weeks. Um, I, I tend to even put the ones I make up there, you know, just 99 cent auctions. Um, but I'm excited to uh, share some updates on, on the ones that I keep. And hopefully this video is, is helpful um, when you're trying to figure out what wallet um, you want to buy. All right, folks, thanks for watching and uh, have a great day.